Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's just do some practice problems dealing with some exponent rules, uh, specifically dealing with uh, some expressions that have negative exponents. So we'll jump right into it here. Here's the first example. So if you ever see something that looks just like this, nice, short, and sweet, all you really have to do is put one on top of it and rewrite it as a fraction, and it's gonna be one over x to the third power. That's it. Here's another one. Now, if we have four to the negative second power, just keep in mind that four to the positive second power is just equal to 16. So you can rewrite this as one over four to the positive two power, just like in that first example. And what this becomes is it's not gonna be 16, but rather it's gonna be one over 16 instead. That's all you really have to do here. So that first example just had a variable and the second one had just a number. So let's combine the two ideas together and try a third one. For this third example, we have negative four times x to the fifth power times y to the negative second power. Now that we're dealing with an expression that has different bases, let me go ahead and color code them differently to keep them a little bit more organized. So we have this coefficient of negative four, which has its own exponent that's invisible of positive one. We have x to the fifth power, and then we have y to the negative second power. The only part of this monomial that has a negative exponent is this y to the negative second power. So if we wanted to rewrite this using positive exponents only, so the negative four is gonna stay on top because it's raised to the positive one exponent. Uh, it doesn't move anywhere because it's negative. It has to be negative exponents that move. The uh, x to the fifth power is gonna stay on top because it's raised to a positive exponent as well. Uh, so that's gonna stay as well. And then that y to the negative second power, that's gonna move down to the denominator. And this would be the final expression for this using positive exponents only. Here's another. So as you can see for this next one, we have the quantity of x squared over y all raised to the negative third power. First, I'm gonna start by color coding the bases and keep in mind that the y in the denominator is being raised to the first power. I just like writing those ones in so I don't forget about them. And then let me just show you two quick ways on simplifying this expression. So for this first method, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, uh, these bases inside the parentheses and just flip them real quick at the beginning. And so I know they have positive exponents, so you may be wondering like, why are we flipping them? But notice how we have that negative three exponent on the outside. So if we flip that to a positive three power on the outside, remember that's basically gonna move both things on the inside so they swap places. Now that we have this fraction raised to a positive exponent, we don't have to deal with negative exponents at all. This three is gonna be applied to both of these bases that are in the inside here. So what we're gonna have here is, we're gonna have y to the first power raised to the third power. So if we have y to the one power to the third power, we just multiply that one and three together. That's gonna be y to the third power. And on the bottom, that x to the second power to the third power, we can multiply that three and two together to get x to the positive sixth power. So that would be this uh, simplified expression here. Now, if you didn't want to do it that way, there's definitely another way we can go about this. And if you wanted to just give this negative three and apply it to both bases right from the beginning, that's also definitely uh, doable. So if you multiply that two times negative three on top, that's gonna to be x to the negative sixth power in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have that y to the negative third power. So one times negative three is negative three. So it's gonna be y to the negative third power. Now, if you're gonna to wanna to make both of these exponents positive, what we're gonna do is they're gonna to have to swap places anyway here. So uh, that y to the negative third, if we wanna make it positive, it's gonna to move to the top and that uh, x to the negative sixth power can move down. And when it does so, uh, it becomes a positive. So you can notice either way here, we're gonna get this y cubed over x to the sixth power. Here's another one. In this one, we have the quantity of three times x to the negative second power times y, multiplied by the quantity of negative two times x times y to the negative third power. Here we have our color-corded bases, just so we know which things can be uh, combined together at a certain point. I'm gonna go ahead and write this one in for the y to the first power, and also I'm gonna write another one in for this x to the first power, just so I keep things nice and organized. Since literally everything's being multiplied together here, we don't really need to think too much about the parentheses. We can ignore them if we would like to. You can imagine just a dot between everything as multiplication. If that's the case, we're gonna go ahead and multiply the uh, pieces that have the same base here. So this uh, positive three times negative two, that's gonna equal negative six. So that's gonna be our coefficient right over here. Following that, if we multiply this x to the negative second power by x to the first power. Remember, uh, the product property states we can just add their exponents together. So this, uh, this negative two, if you add that onto this uh, positive one, negative two plus one is negative one. So that's gonna combine to make this uh, x to the negative first power. 
And then finally, if we look at the y's, we have y to the first power times y to the negative three power. So if we go ahead and multiply those, we can add their exponents as well. So one plus negative three, that's gonna be negative two. So this is gonna be y to the negative second power. Now, if the goal is to rewrite this using positive exponents only, then remember this negative six is raised to the positive one power. So that has a positive exponent. So that's just gonna stay. And on the bottom, that x to the negative one is gonna move down to x to the positive one, but I'm not gonna write the uh, invisible one there. And then for the y, it's gonna be y to the positive two. So this right here would be the most simplified expression if we had to use positive exponents only. Now, if you wanted to deal with the negative exponents right away, we totally could have done that. So for this first part, we could have kept the three on top, uh, didn't do anything to that one, and then leave the y to the first on top as well. And underneath it, we can move that x to the negative two down, so it becomes x to the positive two. Okay, uh, for that uh, second group of parentheses, we could have done uh, dealt with those negative exponents as well. So if we uh, keep that negative two on top, that'll stay. And then that x to the first is gonna stay on top as well. And then that y to the negative three, that's gonna move down, and that'll become y to the positive three. So if you wanted to do that right at the beginning, you're totally welcome to, then you don't have to deal with uh, negative exponents right from the start. Uh, if you go ahead and do it this way, you're gonna notice we can multiply that three times negative two is gonna equal negative six again. And then we're gonna have this uh, x to the first power on top, and we're also gonna have this y to the first power on top. And in the denominator, we can go ahead and squish those together as well. So we're gonna have this uh, x to the second power, and then we're gonna have y to the third power. Now, if you go about doing this problem in this uh, strategy or this way, keep in mind that you're gonna to have to subtract the powers a little bit instead now. So if we take a look at this uh, x to the first power and this x to the second power, remember, if uh, what do they have in common? They both have one of those, or you can subtract. Whatever way you wanna think about it, it's perfectly fine, but the bottom's definitely gonna win here, and uh, it has more of those x's, and it wins by one, so we're gonna have one more x left in the bottom. And then if you take a look at the y's, right? The y's, looks like the bottom's winning again as well, but winning by uh, two. So the bottom has two more than the top. So we're gonna have y squared in the denominator, all right? So if you simplify this as well, uh, you're gonna end up with the same thing we had earlier. So that's gonna be negative six on top. And then we have one of these x's left on bottom, get rid of that one. And then we have two of the y's in the denominator as well. So however you wanna go about this problem is up to you. Uh, just showing you two different ways to go about it. And let's just try two more here. Okay, so for this one, we have a to the negative second power times b to the third power, all over c to the negative fourth power times d to the negative first power. So notice here how we have four different bases, and if we wanted to write this expression just using uh, positive exponents only, then how are we going to do that? Well, a few things are gonna have to move, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write this fraction bar here first. It looks like the only base that's going to stay put is gonna be this b to the third power, just because it has a positive exponent, so that's going to stay put. Now we're gonna move everything else so they have a positive exponent. If we move that a to the negative second power, then we move it to the bottom, that's gonna become a to the positive second power. Um, we took care of b already. c to the negative fourth on bottom is gonna to go to the top and become c to the positive fourth power. And that d to the negative first on bottom, if we move that up, that's gonna be d to the positive first power if we move it to the top or to the numerator, right? And we go ahead and simplify this just a little bit more. Uh, what will we have here? So just cleaning it up a tad here, uh, we're gonna have b to the third power, and then we're gonna have c to the fourth power, and then we'll have our d. And on bottom, we're just gonna have this a to the positive second power. So using positive exponents only, uh, this would be our most simplified expression. Now, what if we had to rewrite this expression just using no fraction bar and negative exponents were allowed? Well, in the numerator, we have that a to the negative second power. Again, if we're not using fraction bars, that can stay put. And then that b to the third power is going to stay up there as well. That c to the negative fourth power is gonna come up top, so that's gonna be c to the positive fourth power. And then that d is also gonna come up. That d to the negative one becomes d to the positive one. And I'm just not gonna write that one, but this would be the same expression. Keep in mind, the only difference is that a to the two uh, is now on the uh, top, it's just raised to the a to the negative two power instead. Here's one last example for this video. For this one, we have the quantity of negative two times x squared times y to the negative fourth power, all raised to the negative second power. So I'm gonna show you how to do this example using uh, two different uh, methods that are probably the most popular. First one is some people just like applying this negative two on the outside to all three of these bases right away, and that's perfectly fine to do. 
So for this first base, what we have is we have this negative 2, and that's negative 2 to the positive 1 power, but then it's being raised to the negative 2 power, just like this. Then for the second base, what do we have? We have this uh, x to the second power, and that's also going to be raised to the uh, negative 2 power as well. And then finally, we have our third base of y to the negative fourth power. So I'm going to write y to the negative fourth power, just like that. And that's going to be raised to the uh, negative second power as well. Now, if we're going about it this way, what we're going to do next is we're going to take this negative 2 raised to the negative 2 power and rewrite it. So we're going to have 1 over this negative 2, but that's going to be raised to the positive 2 power, just like this. And then what we're going to do is multiply that by these other pieces. So if we have this... Uh, x to the second power raised to the negative 2 power. Keep in mind we're going to multiply those two together. So if we do that, we're going to get x to the negative fourth power. Okay. And then if we go ahead and apply this uh, y to the negative fourth power raised to the negative 2 power, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So that's going to be y to the positive eighth power. Now, looking at just the coefficients, if we take negative 2 and raise it to the second power, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So what we're going to have here is going to be 1 fourth in front. And then we're going to have this x to the negative fourth being multiplied by it next. And then we have y to the positive eighth power after that. So using no fraction bar uh, in terms of dealing with like the variables and everything, that one fourth doesn't really count as a fraction bar. You can write that as 0 0.25 instead or 25 hundredths as a decimal if you really wanted to. Uh, but we're really talking about using negative exponents, then this would be what you're looking for, right? Uh, if you wanted to write this using positive exponents only, then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, take that y to the eighth power that's going to be written on top okay and in the denominator what we're going to have here is we're going to have the four from the one fourth again there's an invisible one on top we're not going to go ahead and write it and moving that x to the negative fourth down that becomes x to the positive fourth power so this would be the most simplified expression using positive exponents only now while some people would have gone to that method as their first choice i personally wouldn't have done that myself here's how i would have done it Personally, if I was going to simplify this expression, what I would have done first is I would have rewritten this inside parentheses part uh, using only positive exponents. So to begin, I would have taken this negative 2 and kept that uh, x to the second power next to it, just like this. And right underneath it, I would change that y to the negative 4 right away, so it becomes y to the positive fourth power. Okay, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. All we did was change that inside part so that uh, we have only positive exponents, and it's still being raised to the negative 2 power. Now, if you remember from a little bit earlier, we can do something with this uh, negative 2. If we want to make it a positive 2, we can do that pretty easily as long as we uh, flip everything that's inside here. So if everything on the bottom flips to the top and everything on top flips to the bottom, we can actually raise this to the positive 2 power instead, right? Because basically what it's doing is, is we're flipping everything. So if we go ahead and flip everything here and so we can raise it to a positive 2 power instead, then inside the parentheses in the numerator, we're now going to have y to the fourth power on top. And on the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to have this negative 2. It's negative 2 and then times this x squared. Now, if we flipped everything, right, the whole top went to the bottom, the whole bottom went to the top. Now everything's being raised to the positive 2 power instead. Again, dealing with these little negative exponents from the beginning can be a little bit easier because then we don't have to deal with uh, as many flipping later on. Uh, so if we take this uh, 2 on the outside here, that 2 then just has to be applied to each of these bases. So it's going to be applied over there. It's going to be applied over here and then applied over here. So if we go ahead and raise y to the fourth power, raised to the second power, we can multiply those powers together. Uh, 4 times 2 is going to be 8, so we're going to get y to the positive 8 power for our top. And then for the bottom, if we take that negative 2 and square, remember negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be positive 4. And then if we take that x to the second power and square that x to the 2 to the 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so that's going to be x to the fourth power. So we get the same uh, simplified expression as earlier. I just think it's a little bit cleaner, um, but you have to know your rules a little bit uh, better maybe in knowing how to flip uh, when you have that negative exponent for a fraction. So uh, that just about wraps up this video on a few different practice problems dealing with negative exponents and practicing your exponent rules. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment section down below. It helps out the channel a lot and helps me support other students out there. And as always, keep up the great work. And as always, don't forget to simplify.